folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're in for a very special treat because as we celebrate the upcoming new Peanuts movie that's coming out this year, I'm going to be reviewing not one, not two, and definitely not three, but four Peanuts movies. All were theatrically released starting in 1969 with the most very popular film that became very highly successful when it first came out called A Boy Named Charlie Brown. That's right. This is the movie that pretty much started it all after their Emmy Award winning successful hit that aired on CBS in 1965 called A Charlie Brown Christmas. It was the most highly anticipated specials of all time that was also a big sponsor by Coca-Cola. Yeah, because apparently the Coca-Cola company wanted to come up with a special which had a different meaning and a different theme by using um, Charles M. Schultz's very popular comic strip that comes back to life, you know. Even though before this special began, it started out doing all these uh, commercials for Ford and all the other uh, corporations, you know, by using, you know, Schultz's uh, comic strips, you know, all in, in full motion, the way they're supposed to be. Well, A Charlie Brown Christmas became a huge hit on CBS, you know, with so many viewers. It had mixed reviews as it turned out. And as a result, it just won its first Emmy. And, and since then, they started making plenty of specials as it follows. And they continue to go on and on and on as years go. You know, even you know, after his death and, and Melinda's and all the rest that went. So, yeah. It had Vince Garrardi to compose all the Peanuts specials um, until his death back in the 70s you know, starting with the very first uh, tune and all the other that became very successful called Linus and Lucy yeah the, you know that song yeah that sort of song well anyway that's how I became a huge fan of Charlie Brown ever since I started watching him back in in the 80s and 90s but I didn't become a full fan until I would say 1992 when my mother started buying all these uh, Snoopy tapes that I got and I got tons of those specials that follow after that so since then I became a huge Charlie Brown fan I started collecting every single Charlie Brown over my room everywhere I just never get tired of it anyway a boy named Charlie Brown became the most uh, highly successful films of all time and made for its budget was 1.1 million as it turned out it had uh, a lot of great um, scenes that they put into it and they they even added some other scenes that didn't make it into the VHS release sad to say until Finally, its DVD release came along that's in widescreen, the way it was meant to be seen. It's uh, digitally remastered. It looks even better than ever. And all the scenes you know, that we never thought we got to see were all restored the way they were meant to be. And the film is definitely one of the best animated films of all time that came out in November 4th, 1969 and it met with critics everywhere you know became very uh, luscious with all the psychedelic scenes of uh, of all these shots that they went into it and they even brought in the music score by Vince Garaldi and and some of the free songs that are written by Rod McCoolin who just recently passed away this year written free songs for the movie yeah free songs a boy named Charlie Brown yeah, failure face and of course 
Champion Charlie Brown. Yeah. Yep, it's produced by Lee Mendelson and directed by Bill Melendez. So who happens to be the voice of Snoopy in this one. So yes. This was definitely a rare treat for all Charlie Brown fans out there. Or Peanuts fans per se. So let's get to the film. It stars Peter Robbins as Charlie Brown, you know, who's been the most uh, popular of the group, you know, ever since the Charlie Brown Christmas. Pamela Ferdin as Lucy Van Pelt. Glenn Gilder as Linus Van Pelt. Annie Porforsik as Schroeder. Sally Dreyer as Patty. Bill Melendez as Snoopy. Anne Allen as Violet. Erin Sullivan as Sally Brown. Linda Mendelson as Frida. And Christopher DeFaria as Pigpen. It's written by Charles M. Schultz and it's directed by Bill Melendez. So let's get to the story. The movie begins on that one particular day. Charlie Brown decided to fly his kite up in the air outside by building his very first one. Unfortunately, the first one that he built was blown away by higher winds. So then he wants to make a new one. And just to check to see if the closest clear, he decided to take his kite and fly it up up in the air, you know, trying to avoid the kite eating tree. But suddenly it started to go way out of control, and he had a hard time controlling it, and it keeps landing all the way down. So yeah, that didn't seem to work out. And if that wasn't bad enough, Charlie Brown's first little league baseball team has arrived during the summer season. You know, already throwing the first pitch, which um, of course winds up <laughs> losing all of his clothes twice. You know, all flying up in the air. Yeah. And then, you know, the rest of his team, you know, who's actually going up against the other team, you know, we're already trying to make all the pitches and and all their strikes, which sad to say, they lost. Well, the other team won its victory. Charlie Brown's team winds up losing miserably and, and won up straight home and while well, Charlie Brown's feeling very depressed and sad that he lost you know, once up at home taking a, a nice warm bath and then went straight to bed until the very next day you know Linus finally came along in the porch you know well Charlie Brown was just talking about his problems and all of his failures that he's been going for and Linus has basically explained to Charlie Brown that people learn more from losing than winning. That if you're going to keep becoming a loser, it won't be able to help any. So, yes. Which apparently, you know, Charlie Brown made a sarcastic remark saying that, I guess, I'm, I guess that makes me the smartest person in the whole world. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Linus decided to play tic-tac-toe with him. And yeah, eventually he won. And then once he left, you know, just to explain his problems, Snoopy approaches Charlie Brown to feed him. So Charlie Brown decided to give him his supper dish. And he got so hungry out of the way, he ate the entire thing and went straight back to his doghouse and dreaming about a nightmare involving Snoopy becoming the World War I flying ace that's going under attack by the Red Baron. So as the nightmare finally ended, you know, Snoopy got so scared that he decided to knock on Charlie Brown's uh, door by using his foot, you know, because he wanted to go straight to to his room and, and sleep inside the bed. <laughs> yeah. Since Charlie Brown was trying to solve his problems involving his failures and all of his faults, he wants up going to Lucy's psychiatric health booth to talk about all the stuff that he's been going for. And maybe this would help, um, 
you know, solve his problems. So Lucy winds up uh, showing all these slideshows of, of all of Charlie Brown's faults. And that also includes the, the famous uh, scene, which I know you saw that in many comic book strips everywhere. It's when Lucy decided to put the football and, and hold on to it so he can let Charlie Brown go running around and kicking it. But of course, Lucy winds up pulling the football away and, and Charlie Brown decided to go all the way up in the air and, and suddenly land right flat on his back, almost killed himself. <laughs> in which later on, they show an instant replay of that scene. So that was like, <laughs> who would have fought? So yeah. So Charlie Brown started to feel very miserable about this. That on the way to school the very next day, Linus encounters Charlie Brown. They thought maybe the only way to solve all this problem, since none of them work, is to enter a spelling bee contest. Which apparently Lucy decided to joke around with him and and discovered that, yeah, that no matter what he does, he's going to fail every chance he got. So, yep. So, Lucy, along with his friends, Violet and Patty started making fun of him. And, and, and of course, to the tune of a song called Failure Face. So, they call him that. And then, yeah, since Charlie Brown got so upset that he'll just started, he decided to show them by entering the spelling bee contest and be able to win any chance he got. So the only thing he had to deal with is that he had to sign in at school and and spell all the words you know that comes from from the dictionary or any other. So such as the word insecure and and stomach ache and all that. So he wants a volunteering the spelling bee and 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 only to do all this is is to continue uh, remembering all the words in order to to get there was to start studying you know which he did with Linus and Snoopy which I know Snoopy was playing his his harp yeah that sort of which is not like any other harp but it's one of those small harps that's like a rubber band so <laughs> you want to believe he did that doing that down 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 that sort of way. Charlie Brown and Linus were, were singing a song, I before E except after C. So it explains all the stuff. You know, with all the spelling rules that they had to be solving, Charlie Brown already had to say all the, the words that he got it right, and then everybody was cheering on, and he would suddenly become a champion. Yep, which they sing the song, Champion Charlie Brown. And suddenly, uh, Lucy wants to becoming his agent. So he, he rectally uh, thought maybe this will help become by showing him that he'll become a champion in, in the spelling bean contest. Unfortunately, Charlie Buff found that, that he won the entire thing and he thought this whole thing was over so he don't have to deal with this anymore. Only to, to find out that this whole thing was the beginning of it. So yes, Lucy decided to talk about all of this and that's where it you know, leads to bigger problems. Because now, Charlie Brown decided to go on a trip to Manhattan, which Linus and everybody wished him luck to see if, if Charlie Brown will definitely be able to become successful for the, for the National Spelling Bee at the Rockefeller Center. Of course, Linus wants up giving him his blanket, so just for good luck, but everybody cheers him while the bus pulled away. Charlie Brown was already in tears, you know, because they'll miss him. So they went all the way to New York City, you know, with Linus already feeling I'm very shocked that he gave this blanket to Charlie Brown and and he wanted to go back up with Snoopy along by taking the bus to to New York, you know, all the way to to the hotel room which Charlie Brown stayed and and just telling them to find out where the blanket is. You know, of course Charlie Brown thought he he left at the library but he didn't. So all this occurs. Yeah, while Snoopy is just going around playing hockey inside the the skating rink in in New York, yeah, which had a lot of psychedelic colors that they went into it, all the animation with all the shots, shadowy figures, you know, playing hockey and everything. 
So that was really a, a fine moment that they put in. So anyway, as um, Charlie Brown was already getting ready, you know, to go to the Spelling Bee uh, Championship at the Rockefeller Center, you know, because only to find out that he did have the blanket all the time, and yeah, so on and so forth. Yeah, they're all wishing him good luck. You know, Linus and, and Snoopy, you know, came along to see the, the show. You know, everything was turning out great. Everybody was there. They were talking about all the words. Some of them were getting it wrong. Others were sort of getting it right, and then they all left completely. But only two remaining guys left, which Charlie Brown and and the guy that looked like Schroeder. <laughs> And yeah, everybody was watching until all of a sudden Charlie Brown actually was trying to spell that one last word that which would earn him to, to actually win the championship. Which was one of the most easiest words ever, which happens to be the name of a dog. That's Snoopy's dog, that is. Beagle. Well, he got the name wrong and sadly, you know, he lost. Yeah, being the only one, and sadly he just went back home, feeling very miserable and and feel more failure as it is that you know he decided to just stay home all day and not having to deal with anybody anymore. And then, and as the next morning follows, you know Linus finally came in and and definitely uh, you know trying to see if Charlie Brown's doing okay and. You know, <laughs> and then when Charlie Brown finally got out out of bed, you know, since he'd been staying in there for all this time, and he finally got out outside and and he spotted Lucy, you know, try to kick the football one more time, and once once again he misses, and then <laughs> and then Lucy just says, "Welcome home, Charlie Brown," and then the movie ends. And I gotta say, it's one of the best animated features of all time, you know, in non-Disney standards. But it works so well, since this was the very first film that Charles M. Schultz and Bill Melendez had done. It was definitely a whole lot different from all the Charlie Brown specials that we've seen. Because everything that they put in this special really had a, a good meaning about it. I mean, about what was it like... If you have Charlie Brown, you know, going through all these stages in order to become more, you know, than just winning. So, even if he had lost everything that he has gone for, you know, doing with all these faults he's going for, no matter what he does, he'll always keep on trying. But it's just sad that, you know, you know, he has to be dealing with all this crap, you know, involving Lucy and everybody else and the fact that he's losing all the time and all that. yeah I feel sorry for Charlie Brown though because he didn't deserve this sometimes you know we want to see Charlie Brown as successful I mean not become a failure all the time and he definitely deserved better than that but anyway when I first saw this movie I couldn't believe how stunning and very psychedelic at how the animation looked in the film I mean everything from all these shots of uh, Schroeder, you know, playing Beethoven, yeah, where they show all the these beautiful scenes of shots of Beethoven and all, all the musical scores that they were going in and everything, to all these wonderful shots of the World War One flying ace going after the Red Baron, and you saw like some very psychedelic shots of of Snoopy's doghouse, you know, driving around like like it's a uh, like it's a plane. Yeah, and yeah, everything that they put into it, and but this one had like so many of these shots. It sort of seemed like a reference to uh, any Warhol or even all the other ones that's been done by Bob Clampett or or any other animators out there. I mean, this was very well made. You know, it was not something you never thought you expect to see in, in an animated film, but it worked, and it really surprises me of how luscious the colors really um, react to it. And not only that, the music also was very soothing and 
very stunning too as well which um, the late great Bud McEwen uh, wrote the lyrics for the first three songs and he did a very good job coming up with these songs because I thought which happens to be the title of the film was definitely one of my favorite songs ever in this movie I mean starting from the beginning to the end and it was just magical you know, while Vince Guaraldi did most of the arrangement of of all the other songs that they put into it, so it's really cool. Also, the song uh, "I Before E Except After C" was was arranged by John Scott Trotter by adding all these up up tempo jazz tunes and all this other stuff that might have been heard from one of the previous uh, Peanut specials that they had. So they knew they were going to put up for it, and it worked. Also, the skating sequence was also amazing. The, you know, once again, you know, it had a very psychedelic feel to it when they started uh, showing shots of Snoopy, you know, skating around and then playing hockey, and all you see all these uh, figures, you know, coming around. I mean, this was so amazing, and I, I'm surprised it was even well choreographed by a figure skater by the name of Skippy Baxter. So yeah, he, he did most of that. And Schroeder played the, the second movement called Sonieta Palatique by Beethoven. So it was really interesting how they really throw in something there. And then of course you hear Snoopy's harp being played by by using all those uh by using his harp with a uh a rubber band, sort of Really cool. But anyway, uh uh, the characters were really fascinated. I mean, I know, you know, Lucy and Violet and Pelly were jerks. I know there was a shot in in one of the uh, the scenes where, believe it or not, P Pepper and Patty actually made an appearance, and you wouldn't believe that because even though Pepper and Patty wasn't in the film long enough, I'm surprised that this was would have been its, her first appearance on that one particular scene. You know, when they were cheering on as, you know, as uh, Charlie Brown won the Spelling Bee Contest before he winds up entering the, the championship later on. Yeah. So it was really cool. Um, but nevertheless, this was definitely one of the finest uh, Charlie Brown theatrically released films ever made. And yeah, definitely a highly successful film. It only, only made enough of its budget. Like six, I believe it was like six million dollars as it made up. And its budget, of course, for the film itself was only 1.1 million. So it made it up for the fact that this was, you know, the biggest of 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 its time, seeing that this was the late 60s. So yeah, it became so popular that it was enough to spawn another sequel, which was, of course, Snoopy Come Home. Which I'm going to be reviewing later on, yeah. And also, its follow-ups, um, "Race for Your Life," Charlie Brown, and "Vomiage," Charlie Brown, and "Don't Come Back," yeah. So, <laughs> but at the same time, um, I was so pissed off at at Lucy too because Lucy's been treating Charlie Brown like crap for almost throughout the film. Because of the fact that she's being, as as she is, you know, a crabby bitch, you know, and bossy, and the fact that she wants to control Charlie Brown to become his agent after a spelling bee contest, yeah, just kind of pisses me off, though, that she had to act like this. Uh, but <laughs> what do you expect? It gets even worse when Charlie Brown had to suffer all of his faults, um, as many specials follow, so, yeah. But other than that, though, I, I really enjoyed this movie. It became one of my favorites of all the Charlie Brown films. That, along with Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. And I definitely can't wait to review all these films once again, because I really enjoy them a lot. So I definitely recommend you to check out A Boy Named Charlie Brown. Because if you love Charlie Brown a lot and all the Peanuts game specials, this is definitely a treat for you. And I'm sure glad that I got to see it because it was awesome. 
So anyway, I give a boy named Charlie Brown a solid five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.